team support and the rooting for you, then you know you really want to win, and they definitely help you. It was the beginning of a new era for women's athletics. When Title IX started and first became legislation, uh, the focus was really primarily women who had been dissatisfied at inequitable treatment that they had trying to get into college and universities to attend as students. But then it quickly evolved into a recognition that the Title IX equity mandate would also apply equally in extracurriculars like athletics. So that was a big aha moment, was ensuring that women athletes would have the same scholarship opportunities that might facilitate their ability to attend a certain prestigious university. I went to USC in 1973 at the time uh, women had been competing at USC, but not a real supportive level as far as the university was concerned. There, there were five sports. I think the budget was $11,000. And then we added three more sports um, to SC before I left, and I left in 1991. But what we wanted for women was the same opportunities in athletics as their male counterparts. Many young women could not afford to come to a school like USC without a scholarship. So in order for us to recruit the very best student athlete, we needed to provide scholarships for women. And that is when I talked to John McKay, who was the athletic director at the time, and a great friend and a great mentor and really truly supported me and what I was trying to do for women's athletics. And I told John McKay, John, if we don't provide scholarships for female student athletes, USC is going to be so far behind. So he went to the vice president of the university and that was the beginning of the new era of women's athletics at USC. I was the first scholarship athlete here at USC and that was 1975-76. So when I was a senior at uh, Arcadia High School, I heard through my athletic department that there might be a possibility of scholarship money at USC. And I contacted USC first, just decided to go and interview with the athletic department there and spoke with Barbara Hedges, who was then associate athletic director and just a dynamo of an individual. She sold me on the whole Trojan family and what you know the, the program could do for me and what I could possibly potentially do for the, the tennis program. Our tennis courts were, they don't even exist now. Um, they, there wasn't really much of a stadium and we played on courts down below the stadium. We used a little bathroom down there. We'd go across the street to the local liquor store to get drinks and, and the like. It was, it was pretty bare bones, but we had the best time, frankly. I mean, it was, it was just four of the best years of my life. And the women's sports program, the athletic program, was building as far as the other sports too. Volleyball, basketball, tennis, they were all starting to gel. And because of Title IX and offering scholarships, um, you know, some little dynasties were created in those years. You know, I think we were in a unique situation because we had support. Barbara Hedges, who was overseeing the entire women's division, and she was so supportive and fought for us at every turn. And we knew it, it feels different when you know someone is supporting you and believing what you're trying to accomplish. And so it was an environment where we're in a position to accomplish all that we wanted. Before I stepped foot on campus, I just remember the, the dynasty that USC women's basketball did 
or at that time it was the women's soccer team, water polo, and I remember stepping foot in the underground workout room, in the, in the weight room. I'm like, oh wow, this is where this is where it all happens. This is where this is where champions are made. This is where it all starts. If someone were to tell me, oh yeah, you were gonna go there, I would tell them, you're nuts. Like I'd love to, but you know, knowing where I come from, you know, I didn't come from money or anything. I'm like, that'd be great, but how can we do that? I had no idea what a scholarship was, but I knew it was something that was important for my family, an opportunity. And my mother believed that I had the skills to make that happen. And regardless of you know, your religion or where you come from, financial status, that didn't matter. It mattered you know, how much heart you have. The opportunity to receive a scholarship just made it equal playing field. When I saw that environment at USC, I knew that tennis was more than just a sport. Coming from parents who immigrated from the Philippines and also the Filipino community itself, I knew that I wanted to represent my people, my family, and also just hopefully be an inspiration for those in my community. So when Coach Allison gave me the call saying that I got admitted to USC, I was in my car and I literally started bawling my eyes out. That was the moment I knew that I'm a part of something that's bigger than myself. Coming in before Title IX, I think for a lot of women, and I'll extend that to people of color too, we were sort of told, don't tell your story, just tough it out. That legislation, that opening up gave voice. It allowed people to start realizing their history was important, their narrative really mattered. I love the fact that my leadership in athletics here at USC, starting with Mike, but so many others also share that goal and want to come together, want to basically be a place that gets known for our attitude, the way we work together, the way we support people in advancing these issues. Well, from day one, Dr. Fult has been an incredible partner and she is so special to work with and she just does a great job of lifting all of our athletic program, understanding that the women's programs needed to be escalated, featured more, and, and really invested in more heavily. And when I say invested, it's not all money. Sometimes it's energy and passion and fundraising and things that we're talking about and just continues to snowball and gain momentum. And I think that there's no question that Carol does a great job of helping inspire us and keep challenging us to look for new ways to take advantage of such a rich history. So obviously we have room for improvement and we're taking those strides. I'm very proud that we've hired three female coaches here that all were coached by men before. And I think that's an intentional effort to go out and find the top female coaches in the country to come here to USC and really elevate the status of all those programs. There's no question that there are phenomenal female leaders. You just need to go out and find them. You know, as we look towards gender equality, not just in terms of the experience of student athletes and the opportunities for women athletes, it's also the opportunity for administration as well. And for what I do now, that just means I'm the highest ranking woman in the athletic department. Some of the things that come along with that is paying attention to things like gender equity, our compliance with Title IX, um, and making sure that our female student athletes in general have the best um, experience ever. I don't think that I would have this opportunity if it were not for Barbara, if it were not for Title IX. You would probably just see an exec staff full of men. Um, and so this designation affords that there is actually always someone who is a female um, who is involved in executive type decisions within our athletic department. It, it makes me feel um, extremely proud that I was part of the initial movement of USC in the new era. This 50 years celebration anniversary gives us a good opportunity to look back and highlight where we've been, how far we've come, but then it also allows us to focus on maybe where can we still go as far as 
budgets or salaries and equity in those areas. So it's, it's an interesting education and hopefully we're still learning and improving on that. But it's a really great history success story of what it's done for women's sports and um, SC is a prime example of that and the success that they've had in women's athletics. When you are successful, it's easy just to go off on your own tangent. I don't see that. I see them reaching out. I look at the way they try to bring others along, the way they try to speak out for people that might have different issues than are their own and take a very strong attitude that we care about those, we hear those have never been heard and we want to be advocates not only for ourselves, for all others. I, I honestly believe that if you measured from 1972 into right now 50 years and maybe it wasn't fast enough, but we have seen incredible progress.